For those who don't know me, my name is Ian Wood. Um, I am the Global Sales and Marketing Manager here at Deep Casing Tools. Um, I've been with the company since early February. Um, and my the last 12 years of my career have been geared towards assisting our clients getting liners, completions, casings to TD. And I'll pass over to uh, Dave for his introduction. Yeah, good day, everybody. My name is Dave Charles. Uh, I'm a drilling engineer working for Deep Casing Tools. Uh, I primarily um, provide uh, applications engineering support um, where I um, you know, ensure that the Deep Casing Tools tools um, fit exactly in with uh, are optimized for use on, on, on our, our clients' wells. Um, I spent previously eight years in the Middle East um, as a drilling engineer on ERD wells. So great to be here this morning or afternoon with you. Right, many thanks, Dave. All right, so we're going to kick off the discussion. Um, you know, we're just looking generally, I mean, what is the value of deploying your liners completions to TD for the first time? And, you know, how the deep casing tools portfolio can mitigate against any risk that we see in these situations. Um, you know, from my experience, um, you know, especially looking at sand control completions, obviously 100% sand face production is key. Uh, you know, it's all about production, it's all about money, it's all about return on your well. It's the final string in your well. So any mistakes you make further down the well, any risks you don't mitigate against can cost you by loss of the entire well, for instance, at least a loss of a section. We're looking at things like if you don't set not so much 100% target depth, but not getting, you know, the likes of swell packers in the correct places can lead to wells becoming water wet far quicker than originally prognosed if you don't isolate the correct zones. Um, water breaks it reduces your recovery rate. Um, and it's not so much just deploying them to target depth, it's also deploying them efficiently so you don't damage them. If you damage your completion, it doesn't function. Again, this is something you have to pull out of hole. Time is money, especially deep down in the well, long trips, long round trips, clean out trips, side tracks. When everything's at final string, everything's deeper, takes longer and is more costly. Yeah, exactly. And with uh, intermediate uh, casing strings and liners, it's also really important to get them down first time and get them to the target depth, especially if you're needing to um, isolate geo pressure zones and keep hazardous formations away so you can successfully drill the next formation. You know, that's key. So getting your obviously tubulars, casing, liners to the depth. Uh, makes a huge difference in the impact on 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 financials for all the wells that we're drilling, especially ERD wells. I would say that's right, uh, Ian. Yeah, looking as well, I think, you know, if you don't get the, that lower completion to TD as well, you're looking at some clients have known to run even mid completions and upper completions, everything is then off, like off target. You know, you can only set packers in the correct type of casing. You know, the upper complete, you've got all your tubulars laid out, everything has been purchased, calculated to the depth of the well. So it's a huge knock on effect if you don't get everything down to TD. Yeah, that's right, Ian. It's, um, I think you've um, just hit the nail on the head there about how important it is to uh, get all these tubulars and completions to the right depth uh, first time. Fantastic, yeah. So obviously, yeah, we see the value there. There's various scenarios. They can throw themselves up, you know, and we're just here to look at how our innovative equipment can mitigate against these risks and minimise them. You know, um, for a small upfront cost of uh, renting or buying some of our equipment, it can cost, it can uh, mitigate against these circumstances and save you from running into these situations. So the first tool that uh, we're looking at, which uh, mitigates, we're making mitigating against the risk of is our neck lock fully mechanically locking drill pipe swivel. Now, the risks that we're looking at here, we're looking to overcome um, high drags in the well. Wells are getting longer and more complex um, in many fields, uh, especially in markets local to us here in Aberdeen, uh, the North Sea, for instance, um, are very mature. All of the so-called easy oil has gone. 
So all the well paths we're drilling now, um, there's a lot of anti-collision, a lot of existing wells are down there. And we've got to go further, longer. And in this case, you can see this well path we modeled recently, um, you know, highly directional in the reservoir and a long horizontal step out. Um, one other key, if you're running in this type of well and you know, you're not making it 2D, you need to emergently release the running tools, preferably mechanically. If you have to do this hydraulically, you're running into all sorts of new risks for swabbing, surging formations, pre-setting hangers or pathers. These are things, situations you want to avoid. Um, so our, our metal drill pipe swivel allows you to rotate the drill pipe independently of the lower completion or lower liner below. And um, this obviously allows you to gain available weight at surface by breaking the friction. And this in turn reduces the effect of helical or sinusoidal buckling on your drill string. Um, with the ability to rotate your pipe above a completion, you can uh, place less heavy wall tubulars in your well. Obviously, this is good for well control situations. Um, from my experience, we've run into a lot of jobs where certain rigs, BOP stacks, we can't shear arms, can't shear certain types of heavyweight, for instance. So we've quite often we're pigeonholed into using smaller tubulars, standard drill pipe, which can be sheared. Um, been able to rotate your drill pipe by reducing that drag effect. Um, you know, minimizes the the requirement to pick up heavy wall tubulars, minimizes the pipe handling on the rig floor. Obviously, it's harder, it's more difficult, uh, more risk on your handling heavy tubulars uh, on the rig floor. And obviously, uh, with the Merkot being 100% mechanical, um, there's it's one less hydraulic window to worry about during your completion setting procedure. So if you're, for instance, um, setting a packer, you've got various sh shearing stages of the packer, you've got to shear a ball seat, you've got to come off your running tool. This takes one more hydraulic window out of that procedure. Very simple. And if you do need to come off your running tool early, for instance, our, the functionality of our tool allows you to do that without dropping any darts or balls. So it's very, very simple. Just now we get some of the types of wells we've been working with. Uh, with the Mechlock, so we're starting to get some very interesting runs under our belt. Um, this is a plot from a dogleg severity plot from a well we were involved with in, in the Norwegian North Sea. And as you can see, the dogleg severity is quite extreme. Um, and the, in the shallower portion of the well, you know, these, these micro doglegs quite often are more pronounced at shallower depths. So this is um, mainly caused by anti collision. You know, you're trying to avoid other wells that have already been drilled in the area. And then lower down into the reservoir section, quite often what we see is uh, clients uh, geo steering across the roof of the reservoir. Depending on how big your driller is, that geo steering can be uh, one of two ways. It can be very smooth or it can be quite up and down. But in this case, you know, it's not bad. Um, but they're obviously just trying to stick to the roof of the reservoir with geo steering. So these high dog legs lead to high friction, high friction factors. And this is where the method comes in to be able to break this friction. We look at about roughly a 80% drag reduction across the area of drug pipe we're taking. And you know, we have to mitigate against the risk of running out of weight before you reach TD. And before anyone says this is a bit of a sensationalist code plot in front of you here, um, I can in fact tell you this is a well we are due to be involved with in about uh, 10 days' time. The tools are going out to a UK operator. Um, we see extremely high friction factors on this well, um, very shallow TVDs, long step outs. So as you can imagine, shallow TVD, long step out, extremely high risk of not getting your completion to TD, especially with these very high friction factors. Um, you can see the red line is our sliding the completion to TD. So you see we're running out of weight quite dramatically once we drop, uh, go along that horizontal open hole. We slide well below block weight and you know, we're out of weight. On in the past on this field, I've seen us. Uh, I've seen the client use a push plate to get the last of their black pipe in the hole because of the extreme nature of the shallow TVD and the long step out. If you look at the blue line here, um, Dave's modelled this in our, our well scan software, which we use in house, and we provide the service free of charge. Um, simply by taking that drill pipe, you can see that the hook gain is 
very, very much quite pronounced. Um, in the guts of between 60 and 70 thousand pounds simply by rotating the drill pipe above the lower completion and that is a fantastic hook code increase and um, yeah watch this space there might be a nice case study coming out about this well once we uh, eventually complete it at the end of the month um, also going hand in hand as I mentioned one of the extreme risks in ERD wells is the helical effective helical buckling due to high drag and obviously this goes hand in hand with the lack of available hook load. So you can see here, while we're sliding the drill pipe, we're not rotating anything above. We're absolutely winding this pipe into a big coil of helical buckling. And by rotating the drill pipe simply above the screen section, you can see the pink line, 40 RPM is the optimum uh, RPM range for rotating down the, uh, rotating the drill pipe while deploying the lower completion. And we've moved ourselves safely away from the buckling limit here. And again, we've mitigated against losing available hook code and we've mitigated against the helical buckling effect. And these are two huge concerns for completion of drilling engineers when deploying uh, a lower completion or liner. So this is just a cutaway uh, of our Mechlock drill pipe swivel. As I mentioned, unlike uh, better technologies, this is a 100% mechanical design a straight bore ID of 2.6 inches, so that uh, accommodates all the packer hanger setting balls available that I've seen in the market for the standard size completions. No, uh, it's one less hydraulic window to worry about, as I mentioned. Now, the functionality of this tool, when you're in compression, you can uh, swivel to the right or left without transmitting torque to the lower assembly. Um, when you need to use this tool in anger, you will be in compression because you will not have available weight on the hook. You can see we have the bearing stack and uh, we've got, if you look at the locking keys and locking keys will, when you're stroking to lock the tool, engage with the locking nuts and the tool will lock permanently. So we, how we lock this tool, we have both a left and right hand locking tool. So you pick up into tension for the left hand locking tool, we do 20 turns to the left and then the tool is fully locked out. Now, one major advantage of this tool over competitor technology, if you pick this up and rotate in tension opposite to the direction of locking, you can rotate the entire strength if required to orientate the lower completion, to orientate a guide chute or step over a ledge. You can then return to compression and then you're back into swivel mode. So that is a huge advantage over competitor technology. So it's always nice to see what the tools look like in the flesh. So these are a pair of tools that we sent out to Australia um, about a month ago, um, one of which was running whole yesterday successfully. Um, now they're a very, very robust design. Um, you can see the two portions of the tool there. And if you look on the right hand side, you can see the key slots. And then once you do your 25 turns, the locking nut will go over these key slots and the locking dogs will sink into this, these recesses and then the tool will be permanently locked. So we have these tools available uh, at the moment in the UK and in the Middle East, and we have a couple of tools working down in Australia currently. So we've got tools in various global locations to service your needs. Um, the next development we're looking at, um, which is the natural progression really, is the tool that uh, in tension we can, and to take to the right in tension and compression, we can swivel, uh, and then again, 20 turns to the left in tension will lock this tool out permanently. So it's basically a permanent swivel to the right in tension and compression and lock to the left uh, in tension, 20 turns. There's the animation of the tool stroking in part of the locking procedure. Now, another uh, huge advantage of our tool, and this is this mitigates against the risk of spiraling costs, I guess you would say. Um, compared to competitor technologies, is the ability to reset and rerun the mech lock on the rig floor. This is a very, very simple procedure, and it's simply done by removing the grub screws after you've run it. Uh, insert these M10 bolts, which are available in every good hardware store, very much an off-the-shelf item, and then you retract the locking dogs, recock the sleeve, and reinsert the grub screws. Now, this is especially useful in a, a multilateral situation, or instances where you perhaps have two runs very close together. Um, you know, our tool is simply, this takes about 15 to 20 minutes on the rig floor. 
Um, I've seen competitor technology has to be sent back to town and then sent back out, redressed. This is simply reset and rerun. Um, we recently did a, a trilateral well uh, in the Norwegian North Sea, where we ran the same single MECLOC tool in all three laterals. And when it was returned to town and MPI'd, it was 100% still in working order. All the parts passed inspection and it could have been rerun again. It's a huge advantage of the MECLOC is how quickly it can be reset. And this is very good for remote locations as well. So yeah, that's just the end of our section on the MECLOC. So as I mentioned, um, exceptional for overcoming open hole uh, case hole drag, so just in the effective buckling and one, getting 100% target depth for your sun control or lower liner completions. So um, I believe there'll be time for some question and answers at the end. Um, you can type them into the, the Q&A part of the webinar um, at the moment, and we'll pick these up at the end and go through them um, if anyone has any queries. Um, so intention now is to pass. Uh, Dave's going to run through how our turbine powered reamer shoes uh, mitigate against risk in ERD wells. Thanks, Ian. Um, I'm going to talk for the next 10 to 15 minutes on the uh, turbo runner and turbo caser. Our turbo runners are our non drillable. Um, turbine powered reaming shoe and the turbo caser is the drillable and I'm going to show you pictures of it and cutaway sections and tell you tell you how it works. So um, initially what I'll do is I'll talk about um, some of the history of uh, some of the history of um, deep casing tools and our turbo caser and turbo runner. Uh, the Turbo Caser and Turbo Runner uh, was developed and first run in 2011. So we've been running these tools for about uh, 11 years. Um, we've sold over 600 tools. Um, we've had um, 254 uh, runs with our Turbo Runner, our non-drillable shoe. And I've had, uh, and we've had um, 97 runs with uh, um, where we've been actually uh, had to operate the tool to get the uh, the uh, completions to TD. The uh, the footage that's been reamed with our turbo runners in that time has been over 35,000 feet. Um, so approximately 40% of the time, when we've uh, picked up our turbo runners. Um, we've had to activate them to to get uh, completions to D to TD. The um, the turbo casers, which is our drillable turbine powered reaming shoe, we've uh, had uh, got 210 runs in our database. Um, we've got 124 uh, jobs where we've had to ream to get uh, casing or liners to target depth. Um, so uh, that's about a 60% activation rate. Uh, which is even more than for completions with our turbo runners and we've got uh, 72,000 feet so all, almost uh, over 107,000 feet of reaming carried out in the la in the last 11 years by our uh, turbo runners and turbo casers the, um, here's a picture of what the turbo runners and turbo casers look like that i took from our workshop you can see on the left hand side, that's our non drillable turbo runner. You can see the bullet profile of the reaming shoe. So it's good at opening up tight for tight spots. And you can see the PDC cutters go all the way down to the nose. So that's a, a high speed turbine powered reaming shoe for our turbo runner. On the left hand, you can see the uh, the picture. You can see the turbo caser. Um, and if you look at the nose, you can see the ally nose that uh, is uh, drilled out. Um, by the next drilling BHA when you go into drilling the next hole section. So that's our turbo case, our, our, our uh, drilling, uh, drillable turbine powered reaming shoe. Here's a cutaway feature of the, uh, here's a cutaway picture of the turbo runner showing the features. Starting from um, right to left, you can see the, the reaming shoe. Uh, that we just saw a picture of with his bullet profile and the PDC cutters coming down to the nose. That's attached to a shaft that has uh, turbine rotors and stators attached to it. And then fluid is pumped through past a, uh, a top assembly. 
uh, deflects the fluid down through the turbines past the shaft, uh, causing the shaft to rotate and turn the, uh, the reaming shoe. Also in the uh, in the top assembly, we have a burst disc. So should the uh, turbine sections become blocked in any way, we can uh, the pressure will build up and the 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 uh, burst disc will rupture and a secondary flow path will be created down and out through the shoe. So that's a, a major safety feature that we have built into our turbo runners just to ensure that whether you're pumping fluid through it or you want to cement through it, that you've always got a flow path uh, to go through the shoe. And with turbines, um, you always have a fluid path through the turbine rotors and stators, unlike a PDM, um, so that even when it's not rotating, you can still pump uh, fluid down through the through the turbo runner. Um, one of the key things with our turbine technology is that there's no no pressure spikes because the hydraulics are totally predictable. And when you put a load onto the turbine powered reaming shoe, um, as it slows down, the pressure drops. And it will drop to a, a point where it will stall. You don't need to, to uh, turn the pumps off or anything. You can just pick back up again and work away at the obstruction. So this is a major advantage over sacrificial motors or other types or, or other devices and, and powered reaming shoes. Here's a cutaway of our turbo caser. I think the main difference between the turbo runner and the turbo caser, they share a lot of the same features, the bullet profile, the PDC cutters, um, the shaft is wide enough to allow the next drilling assembly to pass through it. And the top section, the top assembly is drillable and the nose is drillable. So once you've got to TD, you can come down and it'll be cemented in place. You can drill through the top assembly, down through the cement inside and out through the aluminium nose. Usually this takes about 20 minutes. Historically, we it's uh, very easy to drill through these. Uh, a question that we're always asked about our turbo casers is what happens if it's a wet shoe or the cement is green? Um, if we start to drill out the, um, the, uh, the, the turbo caser, will it start to spin and, and we won't be able to drill it out? So there's two locking mechanisms in the top and the bottom of the shaft, which when you put weight down on it, whether it's uh, you've over displaced and it's a wet shoe, you can still drill it out easily. So again, another safety feature as well as the burst disc. So should should it get um, blocked for any reason? And that's never happened historically to date. Uh, the pressure will build up and the burst disc will block. So you, again, you'll be able to get fluid down through the tool. So this this ensures that regardless of what happens, you'll be able to cement through the turbo caser. So it's, uh, it's a lot of safety features as well as uh, features that allow it to be very effective at getting your casing or your liners to TD. I guess one thing there as well, Dave, some of the feedback we've had is about the uh, enhanced cement job we're getting around the shoe through a turbine. That's a really good point. You know, it's been highlighted by quite a few of our um, clients that when they've used turbo casers, that the, the cement bond logs that they see around the shoe section, the shoe track, are usually better. And they, they they're, well, they're, they're telling us and they think that it's because of that secondary shear that we get with the cement going down through the, the turbine blades and around the, uh, the, um, the shoe track. Uh, one thing that we do for all of our jobs, um, if as long as we're, we're, we're requested to do it, we do hydraulics and we do modeling. This modeling allows us to operate our, whether it's a turbo case or a turbo runner, at the optimum flow rate or the maximum flow rate um, to be able to overcome any obstructions or tight hole without uh, interfering with any hydraulic equipment that might exist, packers or hangers and such like. So we'll, we'll do uh, modeling that will show the differential pressure and then the standpipe pressure so we can get get our uh, flow rate up to the the optimum without um, without impinging on any safety limits given to us by the client and we also model ecd so that we can see well that's the uh, that's the ecd that um uh we we want to stay below and we do this modeling for our clients especially in mexico um and in the middle east and in and in uh, in saudi arabia Here's an example of a power curve that's generated. Once we know what the mud weight is, we can generate a power curve for our turbine tools. And what we're most interested in is the, the operating window. 
So with the turbine, when it's uh, off bottom and it's not on load, we'll have a, a we'll have the off no load pressure, and that's shown by the the brown dashed line in the uh, in the on the on the plot here. Um, and then the green dotted line is the stall pressure. So if you need to use the tool, you'll pick up, you'll come down, you'll you'll start to pump through the tool to the to the the planned flow rate. You'll then come up against the restriction, and you'll start to see the standpipe pressure drop. And this is the uh, the turbine taking load. The reason that's happening is that as the uh, turbine uh, power dreaming shoe uh, slows down as it starts to work on an obstruction, uh, the flow will go from turbulent to laminar and you'll get a, a pressure drop. And this will drop until the tool actually stalls. And if that happens, as I'd mentioned earlier, you just need to pick up. Uh, you don't need to turn the pumps off or anything. So again, this is really good because it minimizes cyclical wellbore stresses if you're having to work your way through an obstruction. You pick back up again, come down gently, and you just keep working your way through that uh, through that obstruction. In this case here at eight barrels per minute, uh, we've got a, an operating window of about 300 PSI. So on the rig floor, the driller can just pick up and down and use that uh, standpipe pressure to operate the tool against the obstruction and gently um, uh, remove it and get the casing or liner to TD. Um, so just summing up the, the advantages of turbine power dreaming shoes that's, you know, they smoothly remove obstructions without causing any further wellbore or cyclical stresses like you would if you're using an indexing shoe or something like that. Uh, the bullet shaped reaming shoe uh, rides over ledges. We've got uh, very predictable hydraulics. There's no pressure spikes. Um, we optimize the hydraulics so that we can get the maximum RPM and torque and the tool work at a very low flow rate. Um, we've got all these safety features built into our tools. We've got the secondary flow paths through the turbo runner and turbo caser, and we've got the locking mechanisms for the turbo caser just to ensure that you can always drill it out. Um, the size of the PDC cutters and the high RPM is designed so that we generate small cuttings which are easily uh, pumped and passed us past the casing and up the hole through the small annulus. So this uh, prevents the likelihood of a pack off causing any further stresses on the borehole. So we've been using these for over 10 years successfully to get casing liners to TD. Um, and we, we like to think of it as a dentist drill. It's nice and steady, you know, slow and steady wins the race. Here's a, an example of how we go about our working one of these tools. Um, what we'll do is we'll we'll get the tool, pick it up, and we'll test it on surface at different flow rates. We'll just ensure that the uh, the standpipe pressures that we're seeing equate to on surface with the um, the power curve pressures that we expected to see. We'll then run it down to the shoe, and we will will take pressures at the shoe at different flow rates just to ensure that you know the tool's working correctly before we go out into open hole. And it's all very predictable uh, hydraulics. So we carry on into the hole. So I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, case histories now. Here's uh, an example of uh, a case history where we um, we went out to a job and we uh, ran in hole with a nine and five eighths turbo caser into a 12 and a quarter inch hole. It was a long section on an ERD well. Um, on that particular well, we came across obstructions on four occasions. We just picked up, built up the flow, moved the turbo caser down against the obstruction and just worked our way through the obstructions and got the uh, got that long casing string down to TD. In this case, our client um, told us that um, he, he reckoned it saved them over a million dollars by not having to pull the casing, do a wiper trip, and then rerun the casing with all of the the issues that are involved with that that we talked about earlier. So that's uh, that was a good good case history from a recent job that we did in the Middle East. And we also have uh, a job that we did recently with our, our turbo runner, putting uh, quite a complex completion to DD in a sand reservoir that had an intra reservoir shale that uh, was very often causing problems and causing the, the completion to be held up. Um, one of the uh, limiting factors here is and this is just highlights the fact that our tools will work at a relatively low flow rate on that particular uh, well. The, we were limited to four barrels per minute by the by the completion equipment. So we modeled it and we could see that we had about 100 PSI operating window. We then ran in hole. Uh, we came across the obstruction um, as expected, the, the intra-reservoir shale that was uh, continually swelling up. 
Um, and then we started to work our way through that shale with the 168 gallons per minute or four barrels uh, per minute um, uh, limit given to us by the, the completion company. Um, and we got through that shale and went to TD. So that was an excellent uh, uh, example of using a turbo runner in an eight and a half inch hole section to get uh, to get to TD um, with, when we're restricted by a relatively low flow rate. So as I said, these tools will work in, um, in all environments and in all flow rates. And here's the example you can see us coming down on the on the plots, uh, we've got the uh, the limitation of four barrels per minute. We can see that the pressure matches the hydraulics that we uh, we expected to see, and then we just uh, worked our way up against the shale well, when we were through it, and then carried on to TD with that uh, complex completion. Okay, that's uh, that's everything with uh, with me as, as far as our turbine power dreaming shoes, Ian. I don't know if we, I think I'm ready to do any questions and answers. Yeah, well, good. Thank you, Dave. Um, so, yeah, no, we've run you um, briefly through our, our two main technology groups there for um, mitigating against risks in ERD type wells, whether that be high drags, buckling, um, uh, you know, weight issues, deploying your lower completion or liner or whether that also be mechanical obstructions in your open hole, like stringers, cuttings, beds, ledges, key seats, which are very much covered and mitigated against by our turbine power dreamer shoes. So yeah, we have a pretty large arsenal of equipment to overcome these issues and successfully deploy your liners and completions down to TD.